We've all seen the headlines in recent weeks across Europe. Foods, ingredients advertised as beef, actually horse meat, as much as 100% horse meat in some cases. The scandal broke with Britain's largest grocery chain, Tesco, and their beef burgers found to contain 29% horse. Can you imagine that happening with Loblaws? The scandal continued to mount from there. Frozen lasagna being added to a growing number of products. Look, selling a product, labeling it beef or pork, and packaging horse instead is obviously very wrong. To call it a lie is an understatement. I mean, it's downright criminal. Horse meat is also largely taboo across the English-speaking world. A recent American survey reflects the consensus. Most people would rather eat alligator or ostrich than horse. Horse, almost as unattractive to people as eating dog. But why the taboo? Why is the horse meat scandal getting reported by companies were inserting roadkill? Horse was a major source of protein throughout prehistory, remains so throughout Asia. Well, religion comes into play. First of all, it's not kosher. And besides, horses have become one of man's best friends, treated much more like a pet. I love horses, and I personally am not interested in eating horse. But you may be surprised to learn that Canada is one of the top horse meat producing nations in the world, widely served in Quebec and in some high-end restaurants in both BC and Ontario. It's often described as sweet, rich, and lean. It's low fat, closer to beef than venison. So we brought in a Cheval chef to introduce us to this alternate view of fine dining. We caught up with Brooke Cavanaugh, executive head chef of La Palette in Toronto. And I asked him why diners should give horse a second look. It's safe, safe to eat. One of the main issues against eating horse meat that the animal rights advocates uh, propagate is that horse meat can contain buttes, as they call them, PBZ, phenylbutazine. Uh, it's essentially a horse advil. Uh, the Canadian Food Inspection Agency has never found any PBZ in any horse meat. They test a small percentage of horses that go to slaughter, but that's only because they've never found it. That's why they don't test more. Uh, another side of the issue is that horses are delicious, and people need to know that. What is it that makes a horse delicious? I mean, I'm going to try to get past how I feel about horses, my emotional attachment to horses, my love of horses. I just want to focus on the, the actual food. What, what is in the horse meat that makes it delicious? Well, actually, to refer back to that love of horses, probably the fact that they are so amazing as creatures is what makes them so delicious, if you can wrap your head around that. The, the fact that they're fast and they're virile and they're powerful and uh, wild and eat you know, grass and are free to roam as they please, that those things alone make them delicious. So you're telling me there's something about the taste of the horse that equals the grace and majesty of the horse. Absolutely. There's a distinct relationship between how an animal lives and how much flavor is in that animal. When an animal, so, is, when an animal is kept cloistered and uh, doesn't have access to, to run, its meat is bland and flavorless. But the more life an animal has in it, the more flavor in that meat. My favorite meat so that I've ever say, had... So would you say as a chef that you don't have to spice, you don't have to flavor horse meat as much as you have to others? Mm, yeah, like I, I, I would want a diner to truly taste the, uh, the uniqueness of the horse. So I don't, um, I don't mess with the flavor with a lot of spices. It's salt, it's pepper, uh, a reduction of the horse's own stock. And I actually, to, to keep it really honest and simple, I serve the horse with the foods that it enjoyed most. So oats, apples, carrots. Sometimes I'll smoke it with hay. When did you first start preparing horse meat? At La Palette, the restaurant of which I am currently the executive head chef, uh, eight and a half years ago when I was 23. We've got uh, two willing participants, and I, I, can, I can sort of tell just uh, <laughs> by, you know, the, the noises that they're sort of licking their chops, uh, chops they're, they're uh, chomping at the bit, as it were, uh, to have the horse. We've got... Uh, 
Brian Reynolds with us, who is a producer for Ezra Levant, and we've got uh, David the Menzoid Menzies. Uh, I'm not quite sure what he does at Sun News, but <laughs> <laughs> we love bumping into him on Mondays on the show, and we love uh, bumping into him on Menzoid mornings every day. <laughs> now, Menzoid, uh, let, me, let me begin with you. Um, when we asked you to participate in this, there was uh, no whinny coming from you at all. Uh, you weren't uh, nagging us, uh, going, oh, this is another onerous Menzoid mission that you're sending us on. You were actually looking forward to this. Have you ever had horse before? Uh, I haven't, Charles. Now, as you may know, I have very exacting uh, dining standards. Um, instant craft dinner comes to mind. Um, and, you know, as my friends at the slaughterhouse say, um, first you get the horse, then you get the a full course. So I'm very much looking forward to losing my, uh, shall we say, virginity when it comes to eating a horse. <laughs> All right. let, me, let, me, let me go from your wonderful and uplifting motivation uh, to Brian Reynolds, who's one of Ezra Levant's producers. Now, now Brian, I don't have to tell you that uh, Suzuki, the state broadcaster, some other targets of your show, uh, think of your host as, as a bit of a, a horse's arse. And I wonder if that's kind of what motivates you to eat one. Pardon me? Um, well, I'm, I'm actually really excited to uh, eat horse. I've, um, I've heard of horse controversies before, especially in like Europe. Uh, my parents are from uh, Western uh, Canada, Saskatchewan. So um, out there, there's a lot of uh, respect uh, for horses in general and people are really fond of the animals and just really can't imagine eating it. Um, but I, I'm excited at the, the opportunity to try a new meat. Um, I'm a, a big carnivore and I, I can't turn down a free meal, to be honest. No, I was just, I was just kidding about your wonderful host and how uh, some of his, some of his uh, targets see him as, as what's on your plate. So we were just having some, we were just horsing around there, Brian, just oh, horsing around. Perfect. Uh, uh, let, let, me, let me get uh, back to our, our chef here. Uh, can we just allow our uh, subjects, as it were, uh, to, to taste? Would that be okay with you, Brooke, if uh, they were just uh, able to dip in right now, just so that all of us could get the full flavor of their emotional reaction? To what I, I can't wait. Uh -huh. I can't. This is what I do. Eat all up, right. boys. Uh, let, let's uh, get the camera on Menzoid and, and Brian here. Now, I, I must ahead, say... I must say, Charles, I, I can still see the marks where the jockey was hitting it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, just get get mm. the mandibles around that piece of meat, Menzoid. Mm. Was that? Yeah. Okay, Brian. Brian seems to be enjoying it spontaneously. Brian, have you had horse meat before? Mm. No, I've never had horse meat before. No, so okay. I have a, right. a full mouth here, but um, no, delicious. It's it's. it's All right. It's actually really tender and uh, quite succulent. It's um, a fantastic piece of meat. Yes, um, Charles, I would say a hint of uh, hickory with um, overtones of uh, polecat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go back to the polecat who uh, prepared this piece of cuisine. Brooke, uh, what, what are they actually having? Because there's more to it than, than horse. Describe what's in there. Yeah, so it's horse that I've seared in cast iron. Uh, it's deglazed with uh, a really good Cabernet. And the sauce is built in the same pan that we cook the horse in, so it picks up the flavor of the roasting pan. Uh, the oats are made with uh, duck stock. And uh, I'm serving it with apples and heirloom carrots as well. I enjoyed If you didn't know that this was horse meat, would you think it was beef? Is it that close? I would say... Nay! Nay! <laughs> you, think, you think it was beef, eh? Oh my God, yeah, so it <laughs> could pass for beef, for sure. Let me, let me ask the chef a and question does, here. Apparently. Brooke, can you, Brooke, can you hear me? Yes. All right. um, does Menzoid remind you of anyone who eats oat cuisine? Does, does he remind you of anyone you've actually met? Honestly? In any restaurant you've ever worked he, at. Honestly, he remind, he's such a character. He, he doesn't remind me of anyone I've ever met. He's like a, he's like a living, he's like an actual human cartoon. He's like, he's like, a, he's like a, a cartoon of himself. It's I amazing. could be your mascot. Yeah. I could be your, a new age Ronald McDonald. <laughs> hey, kids. Get, 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 it's, it, it, it's getting a bit Animal House here, a bit, uh, bit rugged and a bit ripe. So we're going to leave it for now, but I want to thank... Uh, Brooke Cavanaugh uh, and uh, Brian Reynolds and David the Menzoid Menzies for a, a clinic on horse meat. But I just want to give you the last word here. Uh, Brooke, uh, 
We asked you a lot of questions. There are some good questions we probably didn't ask. Is there anything that you want to say before we let you go? Uh, yeah, in, in light of the recent scandal in Europe, uh, a lot of people are scared of eating. I don't know if they're scared of eating horse, though. I think the real fear is, you know, what's in our food. If you're ordering a hamburger and it's supposed to be beef, it should be beef. Uh, that, that's what you should be worried about. Don't worry about eating a horse. Uh, horse is good. Horse is tasty. Horse is healthy. Uh, but take a look at what's in your food and, and where you're getting it from. And try and make your own food as much as possible so that you can avoid eating things that aren't supposed to be in your food. Brooke, you're a good egg. Thank you so much uh, for cooking up a fabulous feast uh, for our friends at Sun News, <laughs> both uh, Brian Reynolds and David the Menzoid uh, Menzies. And uh, we'll see you again. Good luck to you. Thanks for having me. Finger licking good. Thank you very much for, for doing this. <laughs> thank My you. <laughs> Horsing around with our friends in Toronto. Don't forget to tune in to our chorus radio show, Markets Across This Country, from Pacific to Atlantic in Toronto. Talk Radio, AM 640, CGOB 68 in Winnipeg, 630 Shed in Edmonton, QR 77 in Calgary, and the Rollco team in Saskatoon and Regina. Share your opinions with me tomorrow. Call 800-665-2202.